Hi, Keith Gidger with Percy Gidger's Hearth and Patio. We're going to be bringing you several segments over a period of months that are going to be talking about grills specifically. So today's first segment is going to be on the Cajun grill, one that's dear to me, dear to our family because we manufacture it. This is the Cajun grill, which the very first one was made by my father as a gift from my grandfather, Percy Gidry. Uh, he had in mind of making them a nicer barbecue as a gift. Uh, before then, they were making them out of 55-gallon barrels. So my dad took a full 4x8 sheet of carbon steel and designed and built this grill with his own hands from scratch. This was back in 1968. Uh, my grandfather thought he had lost his mind because my grandfather grew up in the depression and thought that a waste of a full sheet of metal was just ridiculous. But my dad you know, said, it's a gift pop, so let me do what I want to do. While he was actually making the grill, uh, one of his customers drove by on a Sunday afternoon and said, Ray, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm, I'm making my dad a, a, a gift and it's a barbecue pit that I've designed. He got out of his car, looked at it, said, I like it. Can you make one for me and can you make one for my sons? He said, sure I can. And that's how they became mass produced. And since then, they're, they're sold nationwide. So let me show you a little bit about what makes this grill so special, but yet so simple and unique. First off, the grill is actually made of 16 gauge carbon steel on the body. But because the intense heat on the cold tray, he beefed it up to a 10 gauge steel. What makes it so unique is that the coal tray is not in a fixed position. It actually has nine different positions that you can adjust the coals to based on what you're cooking. So you can have a smoker, a barbecue pit, and a, and a grill all in one. And what I mean by that, you can have 250 degree smoking temperatures, you can achieve 325 to 350 degree barbecue temperatures, as well as you can get it up to over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit for searing that perfect ribeye. One of the neatest things about this grill is that it's so easy to keep up. Because of the grill, we have a full length ash pan which also acts as a grease tray. So to clean it, you just slide this tray out, take it to the garbage can, and then dump it, dump your ashes. One of the other features that makes this grill pretty neat is that it has complete air intakes so that no matter what you're cooking, if you have a lot of grease dripping on your coals, if you shut these air vents on both sides of the grill, close the the actual lid of the grill, before you can count to 10, the fire is out. The, there's not enough oxygen to sustain an active fire, and so you just have a smoldering fire, which just means a lot of love on the food. The Cajun grill comes in actually two different sizes. We have the large Cajun grill and the small Cajun grill. We even have a six foot Cajun grill for commercial settings, but in residential, these are the two most popular ones. The, the large Cajun grill right here, you could probably put about 20 uh, chicken halves on this grill, you could probably put a 50 pound suckling pig. Uh, you could probably put around 50 hamburgers all at one time. And again, because of the temperature control, there's nothing that you can't cook on these grills. And on a small Cajun grill, again, you have the same adjustable cold tray. It's one cooking grid instead of two. But again, you can put about 15 chicken halves on this grill, as well as you know multiple amounts of ribs and hamburgers and hot dogs. Um, we do sell a lot of these, but again, the large Cajun grill, because like Tim the Tool Man said, is you can never have a too much BTUs or you can never have too much horsepower. This is the one most people go with. One of the unique things about the Cajun grill is all the different accessories you can put on the grill. One of my favorites is the pot holder. When you take the pot holder out of the box and you remove half of the cooking grid, it actually sets in place of the cooking grid. It leaves you a certain diameter uh, hole in the, in, the, in the lid, which allows you to put a seven quart or a nine quart cast iron pot. It allows you to cook anything you can cook in your kitchen, you can cook on this grill. We're gonna be showing you here in a second just what I mean by that. So other accessories that you can get on the Cajun grill, of course, is a thermometer, if you need to know what's going on inside the grill. Uh, you could also put a rotisserie kit, again, on the small one, you'd remove the cooking grid and the rotisserie kit would fill the whole grill. Uh, you can't grill and rotisserie at the same time. However, on the large Cajun grill, I can actually have a turkey turning right here on this half and still be able to grill on the other half, which again makes it this grill the better buy. So we've told you a lot about the grill, but like my dad said, the proof's in the pudding. So why don't we throw something on the grill and see what it looks like in action. There's a lot of products out there that you can use as a fuel source. The kind that we promote and we enjoy using is what we call lump charcoal. 
Lump charcoal is basically an all-natural blend of oak, pecan, with a little bit of hickory. There's many different brands out on the market. Just be sure that it came from the United States because we know what kind of trees we have in the United States. Be careful if it comes from other countries. But the flavor that it imparts on your food is just incredible. There's no chemicals, there's no additives. Uh, if you've never tried it, I guarantee you try it one time you're hooked. But I also want to talk about how to light naturally because you don't want to be throwing chemicals on your food and that gets into your, I mean onto your coals and that gets into your food. So one of the natural ways we can do it is a chimney starter. What you do with this is you fill the container up to the perforated piece to the top and then you take a full sheet of newspaper, just one full sheet of newspaper and you roll it into a loose ball, tuck it up underneath here, set it on your grill or in your coal tray, light the newspaper, walk away, go tend to your meat and in 10 minutes the, the fire starts and the whole coal lights all by itself from that one sheet of newspaper. It's incredible. Then you can dump it into your grill. If you need more fuel, you can add on top of that, leave your lid open, it'll catch naturally. Another one that we like is the all natural fire starters. A lot of these are made from just paraffin wax and cardboard. So it's all natural and this is what it looks like when you take it out of the box. So what you would do is you would break off a couple of these pieces, you just set it in your coal tray take out a cigarette lighter or a long light and then light the, the starter. Again, loosely pile some of your coals on top of it and come back in about 15 to 20 minutes. And again, it's lit all naturally. But the one we're gonna promote, we're gonna talk about right now is one of my favorites. It's kind of new, it's been out for a couple of years, called the Loof Lighter. If you have a power source on your patio, you're not gonna be disappointed with this monster lighter. What it is is basically an electronic element coupled with a blower so that when you put it in front of the coals within about 10 to 15 seconds you're going to start seeing sparks then what happens is with the power of the fan blowing directly into that bed it's just going to multiply and multiply and it's going to catch extremely fast to where within about probably a minute and a half to two minutes you're ready to go okay so now you can see we have both sides of the grill or the coal tray lit now there may be some times where you're just gonna build a fire to one side that allows you to indirect cook on the other side to where whatever food you're cooking, like ribs or brisket, indirectly over fire. But because this coal tray has such a large trough, you're so far away, down for, away from the food that you can still cook directly and not burn your food. We're gonna actually add a little, a little bit of flavor right here. The, the charcoal gives the food a good flavor, but we're gonna entice it a little bit more with some nice cherry wood. You can get apple wood, maple wood, peach wood. Peach wood's really good. Uh, mesquite, hickory, all kind of woods. Different cuts of meat accents the flavor of the food. We're gonna use cherry wood for the brisket. We're gonna put the pot holder in place. We're gonna sink a cast iron pot down. We're gonna lower this down to where the coals are gonna be directly underneath the pot. We're gonna saute a little onions. You'll see that in a second. We're gonna add some beautiful, fresh pork jalapeno sausage. We're gonna put the brisket on, and this, we're just gonna have a lot of fun. Okay, so now we have the brisket on. It's been on for a few minutes. You'll notice that we, we flipped it once. It's got a nice, beautiful, deep golden brown color. That's the smoke that's imparting from the cherry and the natural lump wood. So we're gonna let that go a little bit more, but now we got the pot good and hot. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of cooking oil. Then we're gonna add our fresh pork sausage. And we're gonna saute that down, get a nice browning effect on the sausage. And then after that, we're gonna come back and we're gonna take the sausage out and then saute our onions down. Then come back and add the sausage back into the dish. We're gonna have another episode where it's strictly gonna be on different types of barbecuing. We'll have a, a brisket segment, we'll have a Boston butt segment, we'll, do have a, we'll have a barbecue chicken segment. So I know I'm not taking a lot of time to talk about how I'm preparing the brisket or how I season this brisket or how I'm gonna cook the brisket at what temperature. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to that in a future segment, so stay tuned. But right now we're just gonna nicely brown. Again, we're cooking over charcoal. This isn't gas. I can lift the coal tray if I wanna get it hotter. I can lower the cold tray if I want to lower my fire. 
anything again you can cook in your kitchen you can cook on this cajun grill the difference is, is that you're not going to get this beautiful smoky flavor in your kitchen you'll get it on the cajun we've uh, got a nice browning of the sausage going on so we're going to remove the sausage the cold tray setting is about medium of the of the rail so we're going to remove this see a nice beautiful color Got a nice brown gravy oil down there. So what we're gonna do now, now we got that browning going, we're gonna take the nice already cut up onions, we'll pour that in the pot. We're gonna saute this down. And I'm telling you, this, if they could bottle this in the cologne, this is incredible. Nothing like the, the Trinity being sauteed down in some beautiful cast iron black pot. But again, this is not on a guy's grill. This is a charcoal grill. So if I wanted to bring it up a little bit, all I gotta do is lift my cold tray up closer to the fire. If I wanna simmer it, I just lower it. I'm more in a simmering mode. And you notice right here, we've wrapped the brisket. We had a beautiful golden brown. We put it in the pan. We sealed it with aluminum foil to trap all the moisture in here. We're going to try and bring down the temperature to about 300 degrees and we're going to let it go about five hours. Okay, so here we had the sausage that we had sauteed down. We cut them up into nice little serving pieces. We're going to add this to the smothered onion, bell pepper, and celery mix. We're going to stir that in. We're going to add a little bit of water to make a nice beautiful gravy. This is going to cook down for about another hour or so. Until the gravy thickens up, we may just keep adding a little bit more water just to kind of thicken it up. But it's going to actually turn into a real thick, dark brown gravy so that when you put over that beautiful Louisiana white rice, it's going to be like, oh, so beautiful. We got the finished product, beautiful smoked brisket on the Cajun grill. We're going to go ahead and remove this part of the brisket from this part of the brisket. This is what they generally call the tip or the flat of the brisket. This is the more meaty side. This one is the more, you know, marbled side, a lot more fat in here. A lot of people use this for chopped brisket sandwiches. It's unbelievable. Uh, this is more your sliced brisket. So all you got to do is there's a fat membrane that runs down horizontally with this piece of meat. So you just kind of let the, the knife follow the, the fat. You can see the gelatinized fat. And what you could do with this, cut across the grain. You can kind of see the grains of the meat running this way. You just take a nice sharp chopping knife and just kind of come in here and just chop it all up get all that fat and meat mixed up and then you can take some seasoning afterwards and just kind of give it a little bit more flavor if you want to you can take some some uh, barbecue sauce mix it in there with that and you, but you just keep playing with it chopping it up till it's fine and it makes a beautiful like I said brisket sandwich you just kind of mash it up And there you go. You can add more seasoning, like I said, but when you taste this, it's not bad. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna take the brisket flat. Again, you can kind of see the grain running this way. We're gonna spin it this way, and you'll see nice coloring. See how, how tender it is? I'll show you in a second just how tender this is. It's actually coming apart as I cut it. You wanna, excuse me, you wanna, after you take the brisket off, you see the steam coming off. The hotter the brisket is, the more it's likely it's gonna fall apart while you're carving it. So you want it to kind of tighten up. You want it to relax and tighten up. So before you start carving it, let it cool down a little bit. And that way when you go to carve it, it's gonna stay together a little bit better. So I'm gonna spin it around this way. So you can kind of get a look at this side too. Too, still a little warm but you'll see the coloring and this is what we call fork tender I mean, when you can just kind of literally just pull it apart you don't need a you don't need a knife that's kind of crazy so we're gonna be bringing you these programs this is on the Cajun grill next we're gonna bring you a saber we're gonna be highlighting grills and then we're also gonna be highlighting certain cuts of meat and how to prepare and cook them so please stay tuned we enjoyed having you we'll see you next time if you smoke them if you got them